what's your poison? Is it sex, alcohol, shopping, cigarettes, food, your iPhone, all of the above? Is moderation your middle name, or are you living with an addictive brain? Well, today my guest is Dr. Rick Spinagel, and we're talking about why so many of us have a dirty little addiction that we can't seem to shake. How do you do? Nice to have you here, Dr. Spinagel. Thank you for having me. So what is an addictive brain? Well, an addictive brain is a brain that uh, will continue to chase a drug or action in spite of the fact it's very damaging to their personal life. Do we all have an addictive brain? We can inherit an addicting brain or we can acquire it, but we're not all born with it. We inherit it uh, through two different genes, one that gives us an underactive reward center. Uh, the reward center in the brain runs on dopamine. Or we can inherit an underactive frontal lobe, uh, the region above the forehead. Let um, me, before okay, we go sure, on, explain sure. dopamine, I, just okay. so we know what dopamine well, is. If we look at this as one brain cell right. and another brain cell, right. uh, the brain being an electrical and a chemical organ, when electricity comes down the first brain nerve, these chemicals are released and they activate receptors on the second nerve. Some of them are excitatory, they stimulate increased electricity, like mm -hmm. dopamine. Others mm -hmm. are relaxing or turn down the voltage, like serotonin and some other chemicals. Okay, so like for instance, I come from a long line of alcoholics. <clears throat> so is it a matter of my gene is missing some chemicals that make me want to get high? You would have inherited a gene from your father's side. Right. In which you have a super enzyme, an enzyme that breaks down dopamine. You would break it down four times faster than say the quote normal brain, whatever that is. When you break the dopamine down, too fast, you have localized deficiencies, and the most common inherited cause of addiction is a localized dopamine deficiency above the right eye. If you inherit a mild deficiency there, then any drug or activity that gives you a, quote, dopamine hit will make you feel more normal for a period of time. So you're, you're, you <clears throat> crave a normalcy, really, is why people go to drugs or alcohol a absolutely. or sex or... Let's look at uh, a list of, of addictions. Okay. All of these drugs and activities mm -hmm. give you a temporary release of dopamine. Okay, alcohol, alcohol cocaine. Alcohol, cocaine, opiates, sex, shopping, and gambling. Mm -hmm. And I would add to that mergers and acquisitions. Our reward center runs on dopamine. And when we, as a kid, would, com would mow the lawn, complete the last two or three swipes of a lawn, or finish the last dishes, we should get a natural gratification. There's a mild dopamine hit that occurs that's natural. We have studies now that prove that eating raises dopamine activity in that reward center three times normal for an hour and a half, orgasm ten times normal, and cocaine a hundred times normal. Is it possible to manage those chemicals? Do, in, in other words, do all people with addictive brains become addicted? No, or they become addicted to different things. If they become addicted to mergers and acquisitions or success, we don't typically call it an addiction. We call them successful. We call them successful people. Right. I want to backtrack just a little bit. Why sure. don't I drink? Well, <laughs> probably. I want to make sure. Very clearly, you didn't drink because your father did. So I don't drink because my father did drink, and there was something in me that didn't want that. I see it all the time. Right. The dopamine deficiency itself is not enough to make many people fall into an addiction trap. What I've seen over the years is people gravitate to what is handy. If you look at three generations ago, alcohol was readily available. I never drank. I never took drugs. But I had a crazy shopping addiction. Sure. Is that tied into the, the alcoholic? Same thing. Same Every thing. Every time you buy a shirt or a pair of shoes, we pick on women for shoes, we pick yeah. on men for cars, and you get a dopamine hit in this pleasure center that doesn't last that long but it's good enough. We live in a toxic planet and uh, that it's coming from us, at us from every angle. How is that affecting the brain? Oh, good golly. Multiple ways. We have in this country a major change in brain chemistry in the last 30 years. Why? Antibiotics are a major portion of this. The, the poultry farmers embraced penicillin and we've been loading our poultry since 1945 with penicillin and then the milk farmers decided they could get more milk out of a cow if they put on antibiotics continuously. City water in every city is they're full of antibiotics and they distort the pH of the intestine by killing the good bacteria and so forth. But what's happened with the younger generation because of the, uh, the, the gut toxicity, 
is now derived from the antibiotic load. We see depression, anxiety, insomnia, and panic disorder have tripled since 1980. So this explains our teenagers and, and mood swings. Their hormones are affected by the antibiotics in Absolutely. the food and the environment. Their guts are, are messed up from overuse of antibiotics, either from food, either from um, doctors who've been prescribing it. And uh, because of this overactiveness, they go to any a drug, drug that turns down anything the to take the pain so away. Let's just, at this point, say, um, pay attention to what you eat, um, the amount of sleep, managing your stress, and be aware that toxins are really lethal. Toxins are lethal. Yeah. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.